So for uh, last session of this orientation program, the session is on cyber safety and security. As I mentioned during the previous session while closing that, once we know all the tools, we know how to develop e-content, we are coming in contact with the cyber world. So when we get into the contact with cyber world, we have to be very careful about our data, our management of the data and email IDs, where to access, how to access all these things. So security in the cyber world is also an area of concern to all of us, as well as to the learners in our schools our own children, everybody around us, because uh, this, is a, this is an area where we have started working, but the security issues we have not yet given uh, our attention to. So for this, we have with us today, uh, Ms. Nisha Dua, ma'am. Uh, she is uh, from Cyber Peace Foundation, and she's the principal investigator there. And she is also engaged with CIT in many assignments related to cyber safety and security. If you, some of the participants, if you have got to know about the, I think last week's uh, uh, cyber, uh, this week only we had the cyber <laughs> safety day also. We had a lot of sessions on that. So we are working towards it for the, uh, giving information, spe uh, spreading more information about this area to the general public also, <laughs> so that everybody is aware of it. Uh, so for this session, I invite uh, Nisha, ma'am. Uh, we welcome you, ma'am. Uh, I welcome you on my behalf and behalf of CIT for being with us always whenever we request you to guide us regarding this uh, uh, topic. Now I hand over this session to you. Thank you, uh, uh, Monica. I'll just share uh, my presentation. Okay, um, is my presentation visible to all? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, CIT, for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Behra and Dr. Indu for inviting me for the session. And uh, you all have been undergoing, uh, uh, you know, you have, uh, you have been introduced to new initiatives uh, during this uh, one week and uh, very path-breaking initiatives and how to use e-learning to the best. Uh, so uh, uh, it's good to know new skills and knowledge, but very important thing is that how to use these uh, skills and knowledge and how to navigate the online world where we are encouraging our children to be uh, safely because the safety of the children, whether it's uh, they are in the four walls of the school or whether they are in the online world while they are learning is our is totally our uh, responsibility. So I am Nisha Dua. I am a coach of, and mentor for e-learning models, safe e-learning models. And uh, uh, I also talk a lot about cyber safety and security in the capacity of uh, uh, principal <coughs> consultant with Cyber Peace uh, uh, Foundation. And yes, uh, 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 we've been doing a lot of work with uh, uh, CIET and CRT. And as uh, Dr. Monica was mentioning, uh, last week we celebrated the Global Safer Internet Day in a very in, in a very fantastic manner. And uh, uh, we had the culmination of e-Raksha uh, competition. Uh, some of you would have uh, known about this e-Raksha competition, which we launch year on year, CIET and Cyber Peace Foundation. We launch year on, on year for students, uh, teachers, and parents to take part. We want the students to reflect about online safety. We want the responsibility to come from within and not only we are telling them to be safe. So we had three uh, editions of e raksha competition and about 40 to 50,000 uh, students and teachers participate each year. And this year we had a virtual uh, ceremony uh, use, using the virtual reality tools where thousands and thousands uh, participated. It is also aired on uh, PME Vidya channels. So talking about Iraksha, we are going to launch Iraksha 2022 again, uh, probably in a month or so. And I want you all to be on the lookout for such announcements from CIT and CRT, from State Education Department, etc. 
So uh, uh, going ahead with my topic, uh, uh, children are spending a lot of time on internet, whether it is for studies or whether it is uh, uh, for their own time pass or uh, entertainment or whatever. So I'll give you some certain figures which are actually pretty um, amazing. It has showed the kind of progress our country has made. So in past one year, from Jan 2020 uh, uh, to Jan 2021, uh, the internet users have increased by 47 million. So we have 624 million internet users in India. And yeah, we are a huge population, but a huge amount of a, a huge number of a population is online. And then uh, 1.10 uh, billion mobile connections are in India, which have increased by 23 million in past uh, uh, one year. And uh, 448 million social media users, it has increased by 78 million. We are the second largest internet user country in India uh, after China. We have surpassed the US in being the maximum Facebook uh, uh, users. We are the country which has the largest number of Facebook users in the world. So you see the kind of progress the country has made. Yes, there is still a digital divide, a lot needs to be done, but at the same time, the government has announced a lot of schemes in the new budget uh, last week, and they have uh, said that uh, they will, the optical fibers for internet will be laid in every village. And uh, uh, by the end, in, in next two years, every person, every village will be connected uh, uh, to the internet. So the, our numbers will, be, will like a, again increase by leaps and bounds. So that is fantastic. But at the same time, we also need to be wary of uh, uh, certain things because the responsibility of the good uh, of the usage of internet lies with us. So my next slide uh, also shows, uh, which you all know actually, the children and youth, they are spending a lot of time in front of digital screens, especially because of COVID. And uh, uh, they spend close to eight to 28, uh, uh, the, the, the children between eight to 28 uh, uh, years, children and youth, they spend about 45.5 hours one week. And uh, we are not counting so much of uh, e-learning uh, uh, time. And uh, uh, because of spending so much of time online, about 23% of the children have uh, reported addiction to video games. So we can see the figures here, 30% boys and 13% uh, girls, because girls, why, why girls? Yes, because girls don't have as much access to the internet as the boys, especially in a rural area have. So um, the internet time of the children has increased, uh, but has the awareness increased? Let's see. Now look at this graph. It's a, it's a very scary uh, figure. So, so, so basically this graph shows the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the crimes. Okay, in, increase in the number of crimes. So from uh, 20, uh, uh, from 2020 to 20, uh, from 2016 to 2020, uh, we have shown an increase in the number of crimes from 12K, 12,000, they have become 50,000. So in, in four years, four to five years, uh, we have uh, increased, uh, the, the, the number of reported crimes have increased uh, uh, more than four times. And these crimes are reported crimes. A lot of a lot of uh, crimes are not the internet crimes. Chota mota people feel they are not reported, and otherwise also a lot of people don't understand the mechanism of reporting online uh, uh, crimes. So even that goes unreported. A lot of children don't tell their parents about about getting bullied online or other things. So even those are not reported. So now uh, we have crossed 50,000 and the state which has the maximum number of crimes is the uh, UP. Of course, it has the maximum numbers also. So uh, now with all this in the backdrop, that the numbers of users are increasing and the number of crimes are increasing, the students are getting very, very <laughs> affected. I'm mostly talking about the children in this uh, session of mine. Okay, and especially the children and youth are getting very, very impacted. So we have to reflect, we have to think what to do now. So there are two ways for us, either we block the internet or we enable them to be responsible uh, net users, citizens. So if we block the internet, are we not blocking their opportunities for studies and growth? If internet was blocked, then during COVID time, 
that you know that this two year period the children would not have studied at all and they would have missed out totally and impacting their lives so uh, this the second option that instead of blocking internet let's enable ourselves as educators as responsible educators and let's enable the uh, uh, the children to be responsible digital citizens so uh, you know you you really have to put on your hat of a digital educator which you have been doing for past five days but abhi to aur bhi rakh lo digital as a digital educator what all do i have to do number one is to teach effectively as i was teaching earlier and secondly to teach them efficiently and safely in the safe environment like i said when the when our students are in the school we ensure that there is a boundary wall we ensure that there is a gate and the gate is closed and the security guard is at gate and then nobody is allowed inside but what about internet which is a big black hole Our, our children go there and our children study in that space there are no boundaries in on the internet so instead of thinking that it's a scary place let's block it so let's talk of today enabling ourselves and our uh, students to be responsible safe and resilient on the internet so let's let's think the our are our children ready for the digital age okay now this is a very honest uh, uh, you know self reflection which you have to do aapko andar sochna hai ki matlab no not at the surface no 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 everything is fine or everything is not fine and everything is bad but you have to really reflect on every point that i will discuss now so <clears throat> are our children aware of their rights and responsibilities so what happens that in civics in otherwise you know from the from the beginning you know when the children are small when students come to a school we always talk about their rights and responsibilities that as a citizen of india you must do this you must not do this as a responsible uh, person in the society you must do this you must not do this and we also teach them civics but are we teach them teaching them cyber civics are we teaching them how to uh, uh, how to conduct themselves in the online world number point number 2 are we actually uh, guiding them to choose consciously that they have to make right choices by right choices i mean that they uh, they have to be responsible online they have to be safe online they don't have to talk to strangers so, uh, they, they don't have to post things unnecessarily now point number 3 are we following appropriate uh, are we uh, actually <laughs> enabling them to follow appropriate digital ethics and etiquettes in our face to face world we always uh, uh, you know uh, uh, guide our younger ones uh, what to do and what not to do but we have we not left them totally alone on the internet without these finer points that we, we send them a link we ask them to connect the children connect okay and uh, but before that uh, have you done a session with them on these kind of things and how to conduct themselves online and very important is recognize and manage online risk we tell our children in the real world don't talk to stranger don't take anything any gifts from the stranger but have you talked to them about online where i again say it's a big black scary world okay and we tell them in a uh, civics class how to be model uh, you know citizens of india but on the internet they have to go beyond becoming citizens of india they have to become digital citizens who are embodying universal values why so because internet does not have boundary countries physically have a boundary but anybody can connect with a child from anywhere anybody can come and be you know um, inappropriate things with the children from one part of the country to the other because internet doesn't have boundaries and it's very very difficult to find the criminals it's i'm not saying it is uh, 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 not at all possible but it is it's a very difficult process so these are the you know things you have to keep in mind uh, before you start your online classes so i uh, wish we were have we were face to face and this session could have been interactive uh, but anyways uh, i want you to think of the previous slide and i want you to write your yes and no in the chat box that do you think our children are totally ready to be in the online world so can you please type yes or no and then uh, dr monica can actually tell me uh, you know the percentage of yes or no 
I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Ma'am, mostly it is no. Yes, because you know, uh, we are being honest and is it the children's fault? No. It is the educator's fault? No, it is nobody's fault. Because what happened in uh, uh, 2020 March, 2020 March, let's say one day we went to school on a Friday huh? and you know, we have a class and we plan what to teach. And then we went back home and then there was this lockdown and we were told you can't go to school anymore. Okay, now you can't go to school, what do you do? So everybody came up with strategies on how to do online teaching. We as educators were also not ready. A lot of us have that are, you know, uh, expertise over the years, but how many of us have had this expertise of being a digital teacher? But still, I think hats off to all the educators here who somehow rose to the occasion and you know they donned they 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 started to wear the new hat of digital educator overnight it's very different uh, uh, scenario the classroom scenario and online scenario is very different but you all did it somehow you managed why why did you do it because you felt responsible for your children's future for your students future so you all did it so for that i think uh, 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 you know, a lot of claps for you. But at the same time, uh, we also have to then reflect. Now, we, now, now we've got two years of experience of online teaching. Now we have to reflect that, you know, a course correct. How can, how can we do things a little better? better? We have to systemize the whole thing. We, we have to make it systematic. So, so this is a time when we have a, a basic experience of being digital educator, and then we can now plan keeping the safety aspect also in mind. So how, uh, roughly, uh, what's the percentage of yes and no, Monica? Uh, Ma'am, I could only see one or two people saying yes, rest all are no. Mm -hmm. All are no. And then, you know, I want you to go back and after this session, uh, read up, ask questions, find around. And maybe when we have a session after a year, most of you will say yes. I, I think that's what will happen. Okay. Uh, now, another uh, activity I want you to do right away, that uh, a lot of you are also spending time on the internet. So, in one word, what was your experience on the internet? Pe kya tha? Uh, Dr. Monica, I want to ask you because a lot of people are from South, if I could, you know, see from their names. So yes. should I continue the session in English or Hindi or mixed of both? It, it, it has to be in English, ma'am, because everybody... Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm also comfortable there. Thank you. So um, your thoughts on your experiences on internet as a, uh, as a person, as, a, as an educator also, as a person also, um, Another uh, question, uh, actually I wanted to do a Mentimeter exercise, but I was not sure if, uh, I mean, that would be possible. So I have asked them to write in the chat box. Yes, so just one reply till now, it's a creative world. Mm -hmm. And internet is window to world. Another eye, innovation. Mm -hmm. It is highly useful. Informative internet reduce the distance, wonderful, lots of option, window of knowledge, it's an ocean, depth, unknown. Use wisely, if not, it uses us. Remote learning, informative, educative, and be careful. Accessibility grabs our time. Internet, internet is a window of knowledge. It has both positive and negative effects. So when one person is saying jadu ka pitara, Mm -hmm. Ocean of resources, always available knowledge, then knife sharpen at both the ends, helpful for every field, for money transactions, no boundary, changes life, self-learning place, informative and communicative, it takes our time, Information, informative and learning aid, it is a teacher. It provides more scope to do and experiential learning, online classes, definitely. Awesome. So, uh, uh, Dr. Monica, can you do one thing? Can you just uh, save this chat? Because these are very good uh, responses. And uh, I would have loved to do a, a word cloud in Mentimeter, but I was not sure if uh, it would happen 
you know, with, no, uh, you could it, have done actually when you were saying I thought to create it for you, but then it started. Okay, okay. No, in fact, I have created on Mentimeter, but I didn't integrate it here. I didn't put the. I, I was not. So you could just it. you could just have shared the link here uh, in the chat box. Huh, yeah, yeah. I, I. Okay, okay. Next time I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, so basically everybody feels that internet is very enabling, you know, a lot of us feel that, you know, a lot of positive things are there on the internet, it is definitely. So from your answers, I, I can, uh, you know, clearly draw the inference that uh, uh, internet has a lot of positives and we should not ban the internet for the children. Uh, so if we can do not ban the internet, so we have to rise to the occasion and we have to instill responsibility, sense of safety, sense of, uh, uh, you know, critical thinking amongst the student to use online, uh, to connect with the people, to post, to access uh, information on the internet. So that's what we have to do. So uh, coming to COVID pandemic, the COVID pandemic has brought about huge revolution. And all of you have uh, are the masters of education and then learning has taken a leap. Uh, we were always talking about smart schools since 1992, but nothing of the, that, you know, smart schools didn't happen, but, you know, uh, digital learning didn't happen in that way. And within two months of COVID and uh, the, the learning took a leap, which did not happen in 20 uh, years. So the classrooms became e-classrooms, textbooks, e-books, classroom discussions became e-forums, libraries, digital repositories, and uh, radio, podcast, online radio, field trip, virtual trip, blackboard, interactive whiteboard, seminars, webinars. If we, if we would have been face-to-face, uh, -face, we would have called it a seminar. Today, we are doing it uh, in the remote, uh, this thing, uh, um, uh, manner. So it's called webinar and encyclopedia. Uh, we would access in the library. Now we uh, access Wikipedia online. So you are very familiar, I'm sure, especially after this five-day session, you are very familiar with the now part of it. Okay, so how can we maximize the potential of technology enabled learning? So what are the advantages? Uh, so I have listed you here, you have listed them very well in uh, uh, your reply. So anywhere, anytime learning, accommodates different learning styles and paces. Like if we are sharing, uh, let's say online, the teacher has created a video, so that video can be used for reinforcement of learning by, by somebody who, who needs additional uh, support. Or there are some different type of learners, some learn, uh, uh, you know, some are visual learners, some are textual learners, and all that. So some are learners who, who learn better with animation. So, you know, it, it can accommodate all types of uh, uh, learners. And the third is pr promotes and improves knowledge and skills that are vital in 21st century works workspaces. So we you know this this and the last one is this is actually pretty similar. So what happens that we were teaching? I have been an educator for uh, 25 years myself, so I'm one of you. And uh, uh, to give you a little background, I was also not very technology savvy. I was uh, uh, teaching English in schools till such till about uh, uh, 18 years back, I got into technology. So uh, I understand very well the uh, issues and challenges which educators uh, face. So I'm not removed from them. I'm not talking to you from a technical expert point of view. I'm talking to you as an educator who also understands technology. So, so what, so what uh, uh, used to happen? We used to teach children uh, using the 20th century uh, teaching styles to prepare them for 21st century, uh, uh, you know, work environment. Okay, now internet has enabled us to move our teaching from 20th century to 21st century uh, format also, because when they go in the future workforce, the future workforce is all digital. And the future workforce is collaborative learning, research-based learning, analytical skills, critical skills. We all know Bloom's taxonomy. And these days, uh, the 21st century workforce is not uh, the uh, last three base elements of Bloom's uh, taxonomy. So we have to encourage our children to be analytical, to have analytical skills and, uh, and critical thinking skills and uh, group work and uh, high technology, high end technology usage, our children have to know. So uh, we are actually preparing our children for the 21st workforce using the 21st century methodology. But as you said, as I have been saying, it is not all good. See, any new thing brings itself a set of responsibilities. Okay, uh, when the TV came, 
I remember my grandmother, she was very concerned when the TV came to our house and uh, we, were, we were young at that time. She said, the children will stop studying. It will have bad influence on the children. And, uh, uh, you know, they will not do well in studies. They will have bad behavior. They will learn all these the whole day. They will be watching TV. But for the households which had disciplined TV watching, nothing happened. So new, new things always bring new challenges. And internet is a big, big, big revolution. So it has also brought a lot of challenges along with a lot of opportunities. So it is our duty as, uh, you know, very responsible internet users to use the thing in a very disciplined manner so that we are role models for our uh, students, for our children. So what are the concerns? The concern is that, you know, the device usage has be become the center of everything during COVID. The children were not going to school, the, the children were not playing, the children were not visiting their relatives. So uh, the in the center is the device usage and e-learning was happening on device. It is still happening on device, games, socializing, family, entertainment, social media. Pura, pura, the whole the device became the center of child's life. And that has a very negative uh, impact on the children because, you know, because the screen time, the screen time of the children has increased. And that has brought about a lot of uh, uh, physiological and psychological emotional issues. We all, we all know that for their physical health, it is not good to be, you know, uh, crouched in front of the uh, uh, laptop or having the phone in hand. And then obviously starting from posture to eyesight to so many things, you know, uh, lack of exercise and so many other things, uh, the child suffers uh, uh, bad health. Even adults do, okay, but the child more so because the children, uh, as per the WHO guidelines, the children do need two to three hours of brisk playing like cricket or any other sports, uh, football or any other sport they want to play. Okay, so uh, the, the other thing is the psychological part. The psychological part is the children are becoming loners. We don't know what they are doing on the device, what kind of issues they are getting into. And then they stop socializing. They don't want to talk to the parents. And for them, you know, uh, the gaming is becoming an uh, uh, obsession. Like I said earlier, addiction is coming out very strong. So these are the, a lot of issues. So we as educators, as mentors have to actually, um, you know, very smartly manage and uh, uh, discipline the time between various uh, activities, uh, whether we are at home with our own children or we are in the uh, school. Now that the schools are reopening, and uh, uh, even if they were not, then NCRT has uh, actually mandated, uh, uh, suggested an alternate uh, timetable. Because what happened, what we saw, that the school started replicating those six learning periods. Uh, on the uh, internet. So the child was going from English to math, to social studies, to EBS, to, to other things, one after the other. And then the internet usage time became so much. So uh, experts sat together and they devised an ca academic al uh, um, uh, calendar, or alternate academic calendar, which stated that, okay, children of uh, a primary can spend only this much hour on the devices. And this is as per the guidelines uh, uh, um, provided by the Ministry of Health. Okay, and uh, so, so, so the internet usage gradually increased from, uh, you know, class three to five, these many hours, then six to eight, and then nine to 10, but not more than uh, three to four hours per child per day on the internet. So these are the issues <coughs> and these are the strategies which the government also uh, adopted because for COVID for everybody and learning from home was, was a big surprise, big, a big new thing for everybody. So uh, even if uh, in future the schools are closed, now the schools hopefully are opening, uh, you know, go back to the CIT website, they have the alternate academic calendar, follow that. And that's a very well done up uh, uh, schedule uh, <clears throat> for day to day teaching learning. So now I talked about the screen time and the issues of pre screen time. Let's uh, talk a little about the risks on the internet. Privacy. As we all know, there is nothing private online. I mean, if you think that I am, uh, you know, uh, this information is going to be private, there are hackers everywhere. The platforms take away your data. 
okay you are putting uh, <clears throat> let's say you are using google um, map and then you are putting okay i want to go to this hospital uh, for my checkup okay so on the google map you put so and so hosp hospital okay so you travel to the hospital and then that you know uh, uh, that information is shared you know to with other uh, uh, providers as well and then you'll start getting messages that uh, health checkup free or health checkup uh, uh, with minimum money and all that why is it coming okay why is all this coming it's coming because your information is being used by a third party so there is nothing called as private and what we do we put our all the details on social media our own personal details our family details our professional details and uh, then then what do we do after putting all the details when we are going uh, uh, on a holiday we like to boast us you know i'm talking of adults us not the children right now so we and because we are going on a holiday we are very happy and uh, we want to tell the entire world we want to share this happiness with the entire world so we take a selfie and say, Say that holidaying in Goa for ten days or whatever it is. So what does that mean? I'm telling the whole world that I, with my family, I'm going to be holidaying in Goa in so and so hotel, and I have already put all my details uh, regarding my home address and other things on the internet. Okay, and then obviously it's uh, inviting trouble. Totally, that my house is uh, empty. Please come and uh, uh, rob my house. or uh, putting up the photo of the children my child so and so has won award in so and so and belongs to that school okay now your other details are there online and there is the child's detail also so anybody can take advantage of that so you know we are sharing uh, sharing information with the uh, strangers so stranger danger is another thing which i will talk about because that's something which concerns the children a lot then the addiction i talked about and where a youth and uh, youth have already reported addiction then online predators is linked to stranger danger which i'll talk about fake news fake news i want to especially talk to you all that uh, we read newspaper or we watch uh, a tv and there comes a news item and especially the newspaper and we believe it to be true don't we we believe it to be true but you know we have to understand newspapers belong to a company okay and what is there in print is a proof so they have they post or they share the news very very responsibly you must have also seen that if some news item is wrong about some numbers or some source or something then the newspapers will uh, put up an apology the next day that we are sorry for this and this uh, read this in, instead of this okay but online कोई आई मीन इन हिंदी पी से कोई किसी चीज का कोई बाप नहीं है देर इज नो ओनर ऑफ एनी एनी थिंग सो इफ यू आर गोइंग टू डिफरेंट वेबसाइट विच विच एक्चुअली हैव यू नो विच मे बी फेक वेबसाइट्स ओके विच मे बी क्रिएटेड बाई समी एंड देन वी बिलीव ऑल दैट न्यूज सो लाइक ड्यूरिंग कोविड टाइम्स देर देर आर लॉट ऑफ फेक न्यूज फ्लोटिंग अराउंड that you do this and you will become okay you put uh, uh, you know the lemon juice inside the nose for example this fake news that will be okay so people started doing that and they got all sorts of problems so we neither have to be victim of fake fake news we have to be perpetrators of fake news that's why i say that we have to instill the children uh, amongst the students amongst the children critical thinking skills that if they see a news item then they should not just believe it they should think they should reflect they should uh, uh, think critically that can this be fake can can uh, uh, fake or not like we get so many whatsapp messages and we believe them and we keep on forwarding so we, we also become perpetrators of fake fake uh, news then digital footprint is something which we have to definitely we have to sensitize our uh, students why uh, why is it so important our students are actually especially the senior students of uh, you know 10th 11th 12th are at the cusp of their Uh, uh, a career okay they have their career uh, uh, at the uh, cusp of their higher education and after that their career okay now what happens children don't realize uh, that uh, uh, like i said coming back to it again and again they don't reflect they don't think critically and in in emotional way or just for the heck of it just to have fun they post something so every click 
every, that you do online, whether you're liking something, posting something, sending something, forwarding something, everything is, a, is an imprint, leaves an imprint on the internet about that person. Okay, you may not, you may think that it is in the cloud somewhere. Yes, it is in the cloud somewhere, but it is very much there. And they say that information on the internet goes round and round. What you do today may come back to you after 20 years also. So these children, these youth, they don't realize that uh, what they are doing now is actually, uh, they are building their persona in that kind of manner. Uh, because these days the colleges are going online and finding out about the social media profile besides the regular admission process and all that. The companies, like my company, if we have to, uh, uh, <clears throat> let's say I'm conducting an interview, the person is very smart and then very knowledgeable and all that. And I like that person, but I will still 100% go on that person's social media site. Why? Because the real persona of that person would be there. So this digital footprint that we leave cannot be wiped out. They are totally permanent because that post, what I have posted about my teacher in an anger, I may delete it from my account, but by then somebody would have forwarded, forwarded, saved and forwarded. So it has become viral. And I may, I may think, okay, I did, I did wrong about, about talking about my teacher when I was angry, for example, and I delete it from my timeline, but then I'm becoming an ostrich. While that information is there, it may even come back after 20 years, 10 years, five years back to me. Like the parents post the photograph of their children. Okay, the child has started walking for the first time or the, whatever it is, or the child is having bath for the first time. So these kind of photos are, put, uh, are, are put online. And when you when we talk to the parents, why? You know what they say? So what? He's just, uh, he or she is just two years old. But the two-year-old is going to become adult. What if that two-year-old, uh, uh, these funny photos, they're, they're, they're cute when they are, you know, uh, just two years. But when a 14-year-old will see his or her photo in that manner and that goes viral, what will happen to the psyche of that person? In fact, there was a, a, a real case sometime back, a child in US, by, by child I meant about 15, 16 year old girl in US. She sued, she sued her parents because the parents just indiscriminately posted uh, her pictures in various appropriate, inappropriate uh, uh, you know, uh, poses and thinking that they are looking very cute. So these are the, I, so this is digital footprint is something which we have to actually sensitize our children a lot. Gaming addiction, we have talked about bullying, trolling, sexting. These are very scary things online. I, uh, I think most of you would be knowing about all this. What is sexting? Sexting is when somebody sends inappropriate text message to another person. So this is happening a lot and the children don't tell back. Because, you know, they, out of two reasons, one, they will think that the parents will take away the internet or they will blame them. So we have to have talks with the, with the children, with the students that, you know, how you should be safe online. But even when you are very safe and you are responsible, there are other people who may target you. So it is not your fault. You come to us. The school counselors have to be sensitized on how to deal with the, uh, such issues. Because bullying happens a lot. And what happens, a lot of children go into their shells when bullying happens. The bright students stop uh, uh, performing well in the class. And the bullies, it, it is bad for the victim as well as the perpetrators. Because if a child is, uh, let's say there's a child who's bullying and the child gets away with it, the later the child is going to become a big bully in the bad world. Identity theft, we know what happens that our uh, accounts and our names, et cetera, are actually compromised and somebody does the phishing, et cetera, using our names. So these are few issues which I am talking that uh, pornography, revenge pornography is also very scary. Why is it scary? Because uh, let's say two children are, they are 15, 18 years old who have been sharing pictures with each other. They are friends. Now they have fought with each other. So they are now, enemies and, and they want to take revenge with each other. So what they do, that's uh, sometimes they want to put the other person down by putting, you know, morphing the picture on the face of uh, their friend, they put anybody. 
okay and they don't realize the enormity of what they are doing or the revenge polo the, the pornography can also be that uh, uh, we are sharing our and our children's pictures online it is it is not at all difficult to morph a picture okay and then you can be bla and uh, blackmail and a lot of times children don't even talk about blackmailing because i told you that they will get scolded the internet will be taken away or uh, the you know the parents or the teacher will will uh, think bad about them so we have to have very frank talks with the children so online dating we won't talk about today because another session can go in online dating because that is a new concept dating is a new concept in a society from western world and uh, uh, online dating has become you know very popular uh, where uh, the youngsters let's say um, 20 25 year old they cannot go and date anybody because the restaurants etc everywhere is closed so they do on, they meet online and they talk online and they spend a lot of time online and then you don't know who the other person is so a few risks in front of you uh you all know that uh, sharing personal and private information i talked about photos and videos should not be shared emotions in anger we post something and then we want to take it back but then like they say there is no oops button on the internet there is no sorry button on the internet ek bar chidiya haath se gayi the bird has flown away it has flown away we cannot get it back so blackmail to trolling and bullying i uh, talked about most of these things i want to talk about uh, uh, personal information i have talked about registering of apps and privacy privacy setting on app this is something important because uh, uh, as educators we are we are constantly telling the kids that download this platform for video sharing download this particular app for math or geography or whatever or even otherwise in our lives also now everybody wants you to use their app i understand when you know certain banks etc want uh, uh, your apps uh, uh, their apps to be used but for every small thing everybody wants that you should use apps now these apps are very scary because these apps are very intrusive they intrude your privacy a lot let's say uh, you're downloading an app for uh, uh, you know geography now why should the app for geography or math or whatever it is or why should an app which is which is supposed to measure the your exercise uh, a personal app or the exercise etc why should they need access to your contacts to your gallery and to so many things but these apps want access to all that so i'm sure when they say access to so and so you would be saying no so it's a very important thing that number one we should not download apps which we don't need try try to do without apps number 2 if we have to download apps let's say if uh, there is an app for assessment or something uh, then the app should be from a reputed source the app should have been suggested by somebody whom you trust okay and you also have to see uh, when you want to dive, download that app from uh, uh, google or uh, apple uh, stores okay so you uh, next to the app there are those asterisks so you should see what is the review of that app what is the reputation of that app how many users have used that app so if if the app has about you know 15 20 50 users which is not a popular app it's not a trustworthy app okay but if it has large number of users where most of the users have given positive reviews and it is app by some company whom you some organization whom you actually trust definitely download that app but then when the app is being downloaded then you have to take care that what how much information or where all information the app is asking the app will tell you access to camera now why should a math app have access to your camera or a gallery no then you say no because these are optional you have to understand that uh, data is the new oil data is the new money and it is very powerful our data is very very powerful the information is very powerful everybody wants information okay so this information is misused ahead it may be sold it may be given to wrong people people may make money out of it we all know what happened to uh, the a lot of millions of facebook users okay. Okay, the privacy settings on this app because uh, all these apps, if you note carefully, the only uh, the uh, the fields which are masked with asterisk is the information which is needed. Rest are all optional, so do not give information what is optional. 
then passwords you you all have been told time and again that passwords are the key to your locker they are not to be shared with anybody so these are the few uh, uh, measures that you can take this session of online safety can go on and on i've just picked up a few issues and talking about them now this social uh, stranger danger i want you to look at this slide you will understand it um meet susan susan is a 42 year old man posing as a 15 year old girl online so anybody can be anybody because you cannot see a person he or she is behind the screen and susan and your 13 year old just made plans to meet at the park it's very scary isn't it i want you to read this slide yourself and reflect on it for 30 seconds so this is a stranger danger i was talking about now these strangers connect with the children they stalk they stalk online and you know they find the right uh, victim and they connect with the child posing as friend or the same same age or the same interest and all that and slowly they be begin to extract information then share photos then uh, blackmail then pornography then blackmail then revenge pornography so it all you know kind of uh, the whole issue starts from there so we have to sensitize uh, our children so very quickly because i want to come to the school school part sorry uh, we should not click on any free stuff we should take care of uh, the details of our uh, credit and debit cards uh, then this is uh, about virus okay uh, we should not uh, uh, you know uh, have the pirated softwares because they will uh, contain virus we should not click on the blue line or any link because they may contain malicious virus and of course uh, we should not uh, uh, our passwords have to be strong we have to avoid against identity theft and in impersonation so uh banks also keep on telling you we never ask your details online but sometimes we fall for the sweet words because we don't know who's behind the screen and then we tend to share now these are the issues but how can we mitigate the risk so if you follow the three c's of safe internet usage then to a large extent you and your students are safe number one is contact so keep in mind with whom i am connecting or my children connecting why are we connecting are they strangers it is very important to connect with them or it is just a time pass uh, can he or she harm me or harm my children so like in a real life we tell our children not to talk to strangers not to accept sweets from strangers not to share anything with strangers similarly in the online world we have to instill this thought in the you know the in in the mind of the children that you have to think who why uh, with, with whom are you connecting why are you connecting and can that person do any wrong to you can anything bad come out of this we have to teach our children that now it is internet is not the place where we can tell our children you know trust 100% be very uh, uh, truthful because if somebody is asking your child uh, intimate details about uh, the family and everything so the child has to be smart the child has to think critically should i share this information should i not so we have to be become very smart from our early age Uh, in the online world then the second c is the content uh if we reflect on what we are posting are we posting something which is uh, uh, which can do harm to us or are we posting something which can help us and the others then accordingly go ahead so is it a personal information i can do without hmm? and uh, if i'm uh, accessing an app let's say even a facebook or instagram or a smash snapchat or any app to teach or any app to you know uh, uh, the banking app or uh, the mobile phone app then we have to see how much of information that app is uh, taking from us are we sharing too much of personal information and then photos is very important thing you know everybody wants to take selfie and post when new dress new haircut holiday whatever but then you have to go back to your olden roots your old to your roots to your olden times that 
you know, uh, we were always taught not to share these things uh, with anybody. Why are we allowing our children to share photos? We never took photos of our children and put them on the community in the community center in the school notice board. Why are we putting them online? So these kind of content thing also, have, you know, means your personal photos, your feelings, and your emotions. We don't tell the whole world. If if I if let's say I've had a fight with my brother or sister or my teacher has scolded me, we don't go and tell the whole world about it. We might tell a few, uh, our few we have people who are close to us. But why are we putting all these things on the internet? So this is a type of content. What content the children are posting? What content the children are accessing online? Both. So we can also control the content with the children are accessing because there are a lot of uh, online, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are softwares which prevent the download of uh, uh, <clears throat> anything, videos or uh, text or anything which has some inappropriate words. So coming to the third one, that is conduct. That am I reflect, am I conducting myself, myself the way I would con conduct myself in the real world? So, and then pass on the same to your child or your student. Like what happens in, in, a, in a real world, we don't want to be outcast. Outcast in the sense that we don't want to do anything wrong by which people may think, oh, what kind of person it is, and then outcast us. We don't do those things. We, we conduct ourselves ethically. There, there are some etiquettes that we follow because we live in a society. So same thing, same thing. It's nothing new that one has to do. The same thought process has to be online. What happens that the laptop is in front and that you, know, you, me, or our students are not there surrounded by kids. So they become very bold. And they, they, they think nobody at that time, they don't think about you know, repercussions of all these. So contact, number one, con content and, sorry, contact, content, and conduct. If uh, your students, they, before posting anything online, they think of these, because we, we are taught to think of these three things in our real world. Why are we not thinking of these things in the online world? So if your students think of all these three Cs, then internet is a beautiful place. Like you all said, it's, it's so enabling, it's so creative, it has so much of information, you can learn so much, you can grow so much. So moving on to next is uh, uh, safe e-learning environments. So now just reflect in your mind. Uh, all of you have been uh, enabling uh, online uh, teaching. So I just want you to take about 20 seconds. And uh, in, uh, you know, uh, because this information has been given to you, a lot of it you may not may know, and some of it you may not know. And, you know, keeping this new information that you have received in the past half an hour in mind, uh, just think about how could you uh, enable or have your learning environment, which is very safe. Okay, where the, where the students take ownership of their learning and they, they are so smart that nobody can take advantage of them. Because we lead the students to a lot of online uh, uh, video sharing platforms and learning platforms and MOOCs and other things. So just think about it. So why we have to, why I asked you to think about it? Because student safety is paramount. We have discussed it. I had told you again that it's our duty that they are in the online space and they are learning. So it's our duty to make sure that they are learning in a safe place. But very important, which a lot of us don't realize, student data is massive wealth of sensitive information. It is just not numbers. In our schools, don't we do that, okay, the students uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the administrative office, there are cupboards where the student files are kept under lock and key, uh, except for the people who, uh, you know, relevant people, nobody has access to them, not even the educators, it's only the administrative staff, they have access to them, and they are not shared around, the room is locked. So we take all those precautions, don't we? And because we feel that it is the data of the students and you know, we can't mess around with it. We can't be uh, you know, thinking that let's leave it alone and let anybody have access to the files. It's a sensitive information. But online, are we that careful? Maybe not. So what is student data? Student data, as you all know, are aware of, it is academic information of the students. And it is, uh, uh, it is the performance records of the students. If the student has special needs, 
or, or if the student has behavioral issues and other things, it's the whole dossier of the child. Then it also has the age, race, gender, economic status, and other things, the parents, sometimes the income of the parents, the status of the parents, then the performance data. Uh, it has uh, some schools also have the medical data of the students. And like I said, behavioral details, the school may also have photographs online, to, uh, definitely photographs are there. So this data of a student is very, very important because anybody can make a profile of the student on the based on this data and then blackmail or use it against the family or use it against the student. Like if there is a student who's got less behavioral issues, Okay, or special needs. Now, behavioral issue child, the child may be having some behavioral issues during the teen time, let's say 9th, 10th, 11th. But uska, we always keep record of that in the school, don't we? Whether it is kept by the counselor or whether it is kept by the teacher. And then, you know, and then when all this is put together, you have a profile which can impact the child in future because I talked of digital uh, uh, footprint. And that can be used again. So the child may have behavioral issues in 9, 10th or so, for example. But, you know, over the age, uh, you know, that when the child becomes a young man or a woman, definitely they will get out of it. But if those behavioral issue details are shared, then for them to get admission in the college or get job, it, it, it'll, it'll totally go against them. Photographs uh, during our online sessions we take, but we should take one after the consent of the parents. And secondly, we should be very, very careful as to not just post them online. So uh, going ahead, how can we ensure safe virtual classrooms? Uh, because this is a slight, uh, uh, you know, uh, oxymoron, safe and virtual. So uh, in virtual, nothing is 100% safe. Okay, but we are to go ahead with virtual classrooms, considering the circumstances. So we have to make that virtual classroom as safe as possible. So <clears throat> the tips over here are, the strategies which I'm recommending are safe and recommended platforms. So what happens? that uh, uh, th there are different kinds of uh, learning platforms. Now, what happens that uh, uh, every, we have different people with different economic status with different financial issues. Okay, now everybody can't go ahead and buy a Microsoft and a Google paid platform. But these Microsoft and Google also have the free, uh, um, uh, free the, the, this thing that you know you, you may not have all the facilities which a paid has, but you can still use those learning platforms. Or if you want to take other platforms, then I said that you have to see the review and you have to see the performance and you have to see the feedback. It should not be that we collect the students on a platform and then somebody hacks into it and takes away all the data or performs inappropriate acts. We don't want all that happening during a class. Okay, the second point is end-to-end -end data encryption. Why WhatsApp is safe? WhatsApp is safe because when we type something in WhatsApp, it and it and before it reaches the other person on the way, okay, uh, it is not the in in the same format English or Hindi or whatever language you're using as you're sending. It gets encrypted in ones and zeros and all that, which nobody can understand. So even if let's say I'm sending a very personal message to somebody else, and if it is intercepted on the way while it is being sent, it will be no use to an, any hacker because it is an end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, encryption. So when it reaches the other person, it it uh, uh, quickly converts itself to the message, those ones and zeros and other, uh, whatever format it uses. So uh, even the platforms that we use, uh, the uh, uh, learning platforms, uh, if they are end-to-end -end encryption, it is good because while, uh, you know, it is, uh, anyway, any hacker cannot come in and hack the data of the students. Then I had also talked about trusted and verified apps, sorry. I had talked about trusted and verified apps. So we've talked a lot about it. Please take that information back with you. Identity authentication is very important in online classroom. Why? Because uh, uh, sometimes what happens that uh, some person with the uh, um, mal intent, bad intent, may get the link of that site through the child, through anywhere, you know, or it might have been posted uh, uh, irresponsibly somewhere or kept irresponsibly somewhere. So uh, for that hacker, 
you know, he, he or she can actually hack that class, come inside the class. And then we've had cases where they have behaved uh, inappropriately during the class. And uh, the one thing and second thing, they can hack the data of the students. So as and when the online class starts, it's very important to tell the children to quickly switch on their uh, cameras. You take the role uh, uh, attendance, you take the roll call, you take the attendance, and then you can ask to, them to switch off the camera so that you know who's behind the camera. It is your student and not anybody who's a hacker. Now, another point is updated software. I had said it earlier. Uh, please use updated software because a lot of uh, malware, malware is malicious software, etc. keeps on coming. And then these softwares have, they, they keep on bringing new patches. Those are antivirus, like, like for example, uh, you must have often note, noticed on your phone or, you know, uh, on your, um, any device, laptop or anything, uh, <coughs> that the software upload is happening. So uh, it is always, uh, you know, software upload should be automatic. Your, your software should be totally up to date. And the softwares which are original can only be, can have the security patches in it, can only be updated. The softwares which are pirated will never have the security update or the security uh, patches. So whenever you get a, uh, you know, a message that update your software, a lot of times, you know, sometimes we are so busy with the work and then we feel, no, 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 I don't want to update now. Uh, if I update, the machine will become slow or I'll be, you know, disturbed or I'll, I'll have to switch off the machine and log in and log out again. So, uh, so you all, so don't do those things. Updating software is very important and following the logout, appropriate logout process is also very important. If we are into a platform or any other site, instead of just closing the, you know, the clicking on the cross on the right, uh, top right side, we should follow the exit process. We follow that in a real life that when we go out of the house, we follow the exit process. We close the doors and windows and lock the house. Even in our online classes, we should follow that. And privacy awareness, you have to do for your students and risk of identity disclosure. I have also again talked about punish bad actors, flag bad behaviors. Very, very important because sometimes children also, they may uh, act funnily in the online classroom because the teacher is not in front of them. So that fear is not there. So uh, we have to call out each time. So repeating this again, part of it, safe, secure online resources and platforms an educator has to use. Uh, one, because of the safety of the children. Secondly, as role models, if we are using pirated softwares and all, then what impression are we giving to our children? End-to-end -end data encryption is important. Uh, safe storage management of data is very important. Trusted and verified apps we've talked about and uh, following appropriate logout processes and protocols. So um, for this, the schools and colleges, uh, like I said, initially, we took our children to online space without actually making them understand the potential and pitfalls of online learning. So uh, awareness is very important. We need to teach them digital citizenship. Also, we need to include in our uh, uh, civics class. Then cybersecurity policy of do's and don'ts and during uh, what to do in online class, what not to do, and uh, you know what is the role of the teacher, what is the role of the parent. So all that can come in your policy. And if you have a cyber safety club in the school, like in SUPW, we have the carpentry club, we have the dance club, we have the uh, <coughs> uh, drama club. So if we start having a, a, a start a cyber safety club of a few senior children with some teachers, and then that club's responsibility can be to continue to spread awareness in the school, create posters, create competitions. So that so so that you know constantly the students are uh, becoming you know you, you are constantly reminding them to be aware. Then periodic hygiene test on all machines. Hygiene, our hygiene is very important. Similarly, uh, uh, hygiene of the machines is very important to ensure there is no virus. Virus. The senior students haven't downloaded anything inappropriate for the junior students to access. So this the computer teacher has to do along with management of software and data in the lab. 
here i would like to point out that parental consent and involvement uh, and their involvement is very very important a lot of times uh, teachers create facebook groups and all that uh, we must realize that facebook is only for 13 years and above and in any case uh, if the children are below 18 years uh, uh, of, of school students we cannot take their photos without the consent of the parents so the cyber security policy that we plan should have this parental consent as well otherwise uh, schools and colleges can be sued and awareness about reporting and helpline it's very important to know if there is an issue then how and where uh, one can report there are mechanisms which a lot of us are not uh, aware of uh, aware about so i'll come back to this slide uh, in a minute and uh, uh, i'll quickly talk about reporting here so one is social reporting whereby, uh, you know, a child reports to the parents or the counselor, and then, you know, um, you, uh, uh, it's an informal kind of reporting. Let's say behavioral issues are there, so the child is taken to a therapist or a counselor. Then there is a platform reporting. If somebody has hacked the identity or somebody has uh, uh, posted, you know, inappropriate comments on any social media site. So you can also go to this Facebook, Instagram and uh, Twitter and all. They have this reporting mechanism, which they look up, uh, look up. If supposing it is it is out of the it is a zero tolerance thing, uh, then they will definitely take action on this. But you have to have the screenshots, etc. ready. Then there is this legal and formal reporting uh, and you can report on www.cybercrime.gov.in and uh, uh, the, the women and the children can report anonymously. It's a, it's a very user-friendly site, site by Government of India, where you can report and uh, you can track your report. They'll ask you what documents you need and it is, and you know, issues are really addressed. We've, we've, we've had some very positive uh, usage and feedback of this site. Then there are the uh, district cyber safety cells are also there. Then the Childline Helpline. Our organization, Cyber Peace Foundation, also has the helpline. And uh, we provide 24 by 7 uh, support. Uh, you could uh, reach us out on helpline at cyberpeace.net or uh, our number is 957 zero 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 double six i leave this uh, uh, slide up for uh, 10 seconds so that you can note down if you need to note down definitely note down this cybercrime.gov.in portal uh, because that's where uh, the complaint can be filed now go <clears throat> So this is my second last slide. And uh, I know I've been talking a lot, but then you know you always feel that there's a lot to share in this uh, and then you should go back enriched. So internet has given us a lot of power. Okay. And uh, we should not misuse the power. That's what we say. So when we are talking to our children or our students, uh, Spider-Man is a role model of almost all the children. And even if they are 14, 15, 16, you know, uh, uh, they love Spider-Man. Like, I love the latest Spider-Man movie. So uh, tell them to be like Spider-Man. Spider-Man never uh, misuses his power. Okay. And his motto is, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So tell them, internet has given you a lot of responsibility. You can connect with anybody. You can post anything. You can uh, download anything. You can become uh, videographers. You can become singers. You can become writers but be responsible. So with great power comes great responsibility. Encourage your children and students to be like uh, Spider-Man. And uh, I would say that be the role models, whether as parent or as an educator or as a leader of the school or a college, uh, travel safely. Now this, inter uh, this uh, um, information superhighway is there for us to travel. And all of you have already talked about the potentials. So let's travel safely and smartly on this information superhighway along with your students, along with your children and be the role models. Be safe yourself and encourage your children to be also safe. So that was my session. I look forward to questions. Uh, hello, good evening, ma'am. 
Good evening. Uh, I, 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 uh, I want to ask a question. Uh, uh, by the last one month, myself and my friends are facing one problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Our Facebook accounts are hacked by some person and they are asking money from the friends. Uh, so how to, we don't know how to resolve the issues. What we did is we created one post and that is my Facebook account has been locked. Uh, as in some someone has created a fake account, so don't share money with that account. Like that, we, we posted in the Facebook and also shared in WhatsApp. Uh, how to tackle that uh, issue? Uh, sir, uh, it's it's a very very relevant and question because recently uh, uh, a lot of people have been facing issues, and this is called ransomware where they hack your data or, or your identity and tell you to pay up the hackers. So uh, you, you did a very uh, right thing by uh, telling your uh, you know, near and dear ones not to send money, not to respond because your account has been hacked. That's a very good step to take. The other thing you could do is that you could uh, take the screenshot of uh, your Facebook uh, uh, page. And then you could write to Facebook that your account has been hacked. What Facebook will ask you the proof, the screenshot. They may even ask your Aadhaar card or any other uh, government identification to match that you are the right person. Okay. And uh, uh, then once you submit those documents, then Facebook will uh, get access to that account. Either they will uh, close that account and then you create a new one or they'll change it back to you. So you can just write to Facebook. On the right hand side, there is this uh, reporting mechanism and uh, Facebook responds uh, pretty well to all these uh, issues. Okay, thank you. Uh, how to report the cyber crime uh, or Is it possible to report that? At the same time, what you could do, like I said, there are three ways of uh, reporting, social reporting, platform reporting, and uh, legal reporting. So you could, uh, the third is a legal, so the, the platform reporting, I have already told you, and uh, legal reporting is cybercrime.gov.in. Go on that site, and then with, uh, and then file your complaint over there, and with appropriate screenshots, etc., and they will also take action. So they will also immediately go to Facebook. So you can do both. You can go to file a legal complaint and you can file a platform complaint so that both are addressed together. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Most of the apps, mobile apps, will ask to give permissions, uh, for example, gallery like this. If we deny, deny the permissions, it won't work. How can we prevent, or is there any safety measures for this? Would you please uh, explain? Sir, uh, it is not that. Uh, it is not that if you don't give permission to your gallery and that contact, it will not work. Uh, when you are taking, uh, downloading an app, you have to fill out the form, okay? You have to notice in the form, there are a lot of fields, a lot of columns. And only the columns which are marked in asterisk are essential. Otherwise, the rest are all optional. So let's say, let's say I have an app which counts the number of steps I walk. That app should not be taking your photos, your contact details, if it is asking and it is not letting you go ahead. Number one, that app is not authentic. That app is there not to give you the service. That app is there to take away your data. Secondly, you can also take the screenshot of that and report it, that this app is intrusive and it is asking for those things. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ma'am, there is a question in the chat box. Any apps or software for child safety and security? Yes, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, these net nanny kind of apps which you can uh, uh, download. Uh, recommending, I will not do about private apps on this uh, uh, website. So you can uh, uh, type it out and then you can find those apps. You know, like for example, vaguely I'll tell you this is that uh, there is an app which acts like a nanny, which acts like virtual uh, parents. Okay, so when you download that app, but the, that app has to be, again, you have to, when you look at that app, that it should not be that app is also taking information. So download a reputed app. And when you download that app, you can actually uh, uh, know 
what all sites your child is going to. You can actually see the number of hours your child uh, spends on particular sites and you can even block those sites with have, you can give certain words and the sites which have those words will not get da downloaded, whether it is a song or a video or anything. So yes, uh, these are virtual parenting uh, methods. And uh, uh, also for smaller children, if you are asking them to um, down, you know, go and watch videos, so we should encourage them to go to video, uh, YouTube for kids and not the regular videos. Because the regular videos, you know, um, there are a lot of ads in those videos which may be inappropriate. So YouTube for kids and also there are browsers like DuckDuckGo and Google for kids and all that. So if you have to have, if you have to ask your, let's say class six, seven child to surf something so they can go to these uh, browsers which are meant for the children. And uh, one very famous browser uh, and very interesting browser is uh, DuckDuckGo and the other is YouTube, uh, the, the Google, Google for kids. So the, so the children can access, and, and those don't contain uh, uh, all those uh, funny ads, and even the security mechanism in those uh, browsers is pretty good. Ma'am, there's a question. Is the Casper key safe for kids? Yes, Kaspersky is very safe for the kids. It's a very good app to download as a parental control measure. Uh, uh, there are questions on basically like how can we more uh, how can we be more aware of uh, cyber security um, a few people are asking so i just wanted to add in here that there are uh, since we've just celebrated this uh, safer internet day so many discussions and many detailed sessions are available on NCRT official YouTube channel. So you can uh, go and access those videos because experts uh, from different organizations, from different spheres have talked about the uh, each and every issue of cyber safety and security. So please visit once uh, this channel. I will share the link also uh, so that you can easily access it. Uh, because, you know, uh, you have that uh, uh, NCRT regularly conducts uh, these sessions every Wednesday, Friday uh, under cyber suraksha, under cyber hygiene, and uh, they conduct all these sessions. So these you can access those YouTube uh, videos on the on YouTube NCRT official and download them. Yes. Is there any protection or security setting for watching videos or websites? No, in the sense that, uh, um, like I said, uh, videos, then your children should be on YouTube for kids and uh, your parental control apps uh, uh, can actually filter the information, block certain uh, sites which have objectional information and words. So that's how you can do or, or you can have your child go to safe browsers for uh, research. Yes, I think we've answered all the questions which were in the chat box. So if you still have any more questions, we can take one or two questions more. Uh, um, I think this you have answered, but still I'm putting it up to you. How to keep students and ourselves safe when learning online? So I have shared a lot of tips with you, uh, strategies for safe online learning. And uh, uh, you can also visit NCRT official uh, uh, YouTube channel where I have conducted and many other people have also conducted these kind of sessions. If Because you know what happens that today I've told you yeah, there is an uh, information overload on you for past uh, five days, so you might forget. So go to these channels and uh, find out. And in any case, uh, 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 we are just a message away. That's not an issue. And also uh, just adding to what ma'am said, uh, as Dr. Angel in the today morning session, she showed you one page on the CIT website where our page of the program also exists in the same section. You can find a lot of sessions on cyber safety and oh, security. Yeah. And also there are, uh, uh, of course, there are sessions on different ICT tools also. So based on your needs, you can also identify that and use that as per your convenience. Yeah. 
Yes. NCRT site, the CIT site has a whole wealth of uh, information and you just have to go there and uh, access it. Ma'am, there's a question. Uh, what about the security of open source softwares? Since we have been talking about open source from last two, three days, and then the, this question is very pertinent here. Yeah, because anything that you download from internet, you have to take precautions. Like when we buy a small thing online or we, when we go to the shop and buy, we don't we read all the, you know, we are buying medicines or any other product. We read uh, the uh, expiry date and the way of usage and the company and other things. We, we do all that. Similarly, anything that you download from the internet, especially uh, with regard to the softwares or applications, I told you to keep certain things in mind which i've said uh, told in my session so those you have to we go to buy medicines we are so careful does it have the right name you know is the is the, is, the, is the company right what is the expiry date we ask how should we eat it so similarly that is about your physical health so internet is also about your physical and a lot about your mental health so we should be very careful uh, while downloading things on the internet and <clears throat> i would like to add here Free stuff is, uh, there is nothing free. Uh, if you're being offered a free uh, free app or uh, anything, then uh, in turn, they're probably taking a lot of information from you. So you have to be smart uh, that what is the information maximum that they are taking? Should, are you giving the information which is optional or are you giving the information which is desirable also? Because nothing comes for free and information, like I said, that is the new uh, currency right now and it's very, very valuable. So I'm not saying you should not download any app. It's like, it's like telling you that, uh, uh, telling your kids don't go on the road. Okay, you can meet with an accident, but we tell the kids to uh, be careful on the road. We tell them while cross, we tell them that these are the traffic rules while crossing. Or when we are driving through an intersection, we take care left, right, and then we go ahead. If we follow the same guidelines on the internet, then internet is again a safe place to be in. It's up to us how safe we want it to be. What efforts do we make? Could you please explain a, a safety measures while using Google browser for adults or teachers? See, as adults, there's a lot of information online. And uh, it's up to us to actually be smart. And, uh, uh, you know, like they say that uh, even when you are gardening, you have to take away the weeds and, uh, uh, you know, make your garden better with the uh, other flowers. So weeding is very, very important. Similarly, I think we are adults and we do understand that there are certain sites which are not uh, uh, appropriate or meant for us or we don't want to be on that site. So we have to be safe ourselves. Here, I would also like to add a lot of times we see um, uh, you know information like uh, uh, about you know inappropriate things coming up that may also be because somebody has put a question in google like uh, uh, about that product okay that and then you might see that uh, you know information about that product starts coming to your uh, uh, even when your child is there uh, uh, online so we have to be very careful about what we search because we are leaving our uh, uh, imprint everywhere and uh, uh, how do these safe uh, uh, how do this free uh, uh, these browsers give us free uh, service by actually sharing our information with the marketeers who in turn push their business uh, uh, at us so it is up to us how we want to conduct ourselves ma'am uh, from kerala Abu rahman sir is asking about maybe i think uh, i'll just post it here but uh, we can connect you later can we have an affiliation with cyber peace foundation uh, sir, definitely yes, you can have an affiliation with Cyber Peace because we do workshops uh, uh, with the state governments in the state government schools. We've got a programs running in uh, uh, five, six different states. And uh, yes, certainly, but through NCRT, uh, maybe you can ask uh, Dr. Monica and then she can forward it to me. But uh, we also do a lot of uh, programs with NCRT, like I told you, e-raksha program, e-raksha competition and uh, whereby uh, you can encourage your school children and teachers to participate in that uh, competition. So there are a lot of initiatives with NCRT also that we do. 
and a lot of initiatives we do on our own as well. I have one more question now uh, regarding the Chrome usage uh, because we are using the Google Chrome uh, in our staff room or in ICT lab when you are using on the right in corner some prevalent uh, images or pictures are coming. Uh, we don't know how to block the images. Uh, I am saying at the right end corner of the Google Chrome, some Bollywood pictures or some images are coming. Uh, it is popping up. Even though we closed several number of times, the images are getting popped up continuously before the children. So how to block that images? Man? Mm. We tried a lot, but uh, we get failed actually. I couldn't, uh, uh, okay, uh, what I couldn't hear you very well. And uh, uh, what I understood is that uh, uh, you have a lot of ads, etc. coming up on the right hand side. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right, ma'am. You know? So, you, for, for that, number one, <coughs> sorry, you have to go to your uh, privacy uh, settings. And by default, the uh, these kind of ads are enabled. You have to disable them. Then some of these ads are uh, sorry. Uh, some of these ads are also uh, uh, pop-ups. So you can also uh, you know disable the uh, pop-up so that these don't these ads don't come up uh, all of a sudden. So on your uh, in your settings you can disable these and turn off as much as uh, uh, you can. Okay, and so so basically you have to go to the settings and you have to uh, the pop-up uh, one you have to block and then you have to uh, uh, in your settings you have to disable the ads etc. So hundred percent it may not go away but to a large extent uh, it, it will go. So privacy and security set settings on Google you have to uh, read. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now I think we are. About Yes, ma'am. Shamira, ma'am, please ask. Ma'am, I have downloaded a laptop and mobile team viewer app for the team app. It was not a genie, ma'am. When you have updated the app, I knew that it was not a genie. So, we know that it is not a genie, or it is a original app. One thing, ma'am. The other thing, I have a list of my education app. The other thing, I have a list of my education app. The other thing, I have a list of my coding app. The other thing, I have a list of my coding app. तो इसके लिए क्या हम कौन सी बातें याद रखना है मैम ये तीन सवालों का जवाब दीजिए मैम मैम एक 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 सवाल पूछिए क्योंकि देखो वॉइस भी क्लियर नहीं आ रही है मैम पहला सवाल पूछिए मैं उसका जवाब दूंगी लैपटॉप और मोबाइल के लिए टीम वीवर ऐप डाउनलोड किया था मैम वो जीनी नहीं था मैम हम लोगों को जीनी ऐप और ओरिजिनल ऐप किस तरह पहचानना है अच्छा तो इसका आंसर मैं पहले भी अभी आपको बताया था कि जब हम ऐप डाउनलोड करते हैं तो ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए कोई बोलते हैं अच्छा ये वाला अच्छा ऐप है ये डाउनलोड कर लो हाँ ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए जब भी हम जैसे मैंने बोला जब हम दवा खरीदते हैं या कुछ भी खरीदते हैं अः तो आ, आ, सॉरी हम लोग दवाई या कुछ भी खरीदते हैं हम उसका आगे पीछे देखते हैं सब पढ़ते हैं सो सिमिलरली जब आप कुछ डाउनलोड करते हैं गूगल स्टोर से या एप्पल स्टोर से तो हमें उस ऐप के बारे में पता करना चाहिए उसका क्रिएटर कौन है उसका ओरिजिनेटर कौन है फिर उसके रिव्यूज देखने चाहिए कि उसमें मतलब लोगों ने क्या क्या रिव्यू दिए हैं वो अच्छा ऐप है या नहीं है और थर्डली हमें ये देखने चाहिए कि कितने यूजर्स हैं अगर बहुत सारे यूजर्स हैं और खूब अच्छे रिव्यूज हैं तो हमको वो ऐप डाउनलोड करना चाहिए ये तीन चार बातों का हमें ध्यान करना चाहिए चौथी चौथी बात ये है कि वो ऐप हमारी कितनी इन्फॉर्मेशन ले रहा है अगर आप वो ऐप किसी अपनी वीडियो क्रिएशन के लिए या किसी सब्जेक्ट के लिए यूज कर रहे हैं तो उसको आपकी बाकी इन्फॉर्मेशन की क्या जरूरत है नहीं है तो इसलिए आपको देखना चाहिए कि वो कितना इंट्रूसिव है एज फार एज योर प्राइवेसी इज कंसर्न ओके And uh, uh, so uh, these things I have been telling all along in my presentation. I फिर बता रही हूँ कि app को जब आप download करें इतना ध्यान करें जैसे आप कोई दवा अपने लिए ले रहे हैं और उसके आगे पीछे label पे सब पढ़े ठीक है मैम I hope I've answered your question. Ma'am, uh, education app के list बताइए ma'am आपको एजुकेशन ऐप की लिस्ट तो आपको एनसीआर से पता चल रही डिस्कशंस में पता चल रही होगी बिकॉज एनसीआर विल डेफिनेटली सजेस्ट दो एप्स विच आर सेफ ओके 
शमीरा मैम ऑलरेडी मैंने जो बोला सीआईटी की वेबसाइट पे जितने हमारे वेबिनार्स हुए हैं वो आप एक बार जरूर देखें उसमें एप्स डिफरेंट सॉफ्टवेयर आपको वहां पे सारी इंफॉर्मेशन मिल जाएगी एंड इट विल आल्सो यू कैन चूज इट एज पर योर सब्जेक्ट एंड अदर रिक्वायरमेंट्स थैंक यू मैम सो नाउ वी विल नाउ क्लोज दिस सेशन हियर आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक निशा मैम फॉर सच एन एलेबोरेटिव प्रेजेंटेशन एंड guiding us through the whole process of cyber safety and security and i think you are linking it with a medicine or any buying example really uh, makes it easy for us to understand that how we have to go about cyber safety and security while being in the uh, cyber world so whenever we are accessing websites i also try do the same thing that whenever we are downloading an app we try to check for the reviews we try to check for the ratings and then also if in in case of software we try to download it from the their own website and not from outside so that are a few small indicators which i also try to observe sometime and i also use it with my kid only so that up to whichever extent we can safeguard ourselves it is in our hands yes absolutely absolutely thank uh thank you very much and i would uh, request uh, you to give your feedback in the chat box over here which uh, monica ma'am can collate that will help me to improve also from from the next time uh, further also basically idea ye hai ki you should get go back enriched from my session and uh, it should be very useful to us okay so kindly give your feedback in the chat box thank you thank you so much i'll take your leave now be safe be happy be responsible and be role model for your children thank you thank you, thank you ma'am thank you so much uh thank you ma'am now uh, now we are moving uh, towards the end of this uh, orientation program so we will just take a 10 minutes break here and please be back by uh, 3:45 so that we can start the valedictory session on time and we can try to wrap up by time itself otherwise sometimes it gets delayed because it's a state presentation also that takes some time so please be on time be here sharp 345 so that we can start on time thank you very much